All right, so today we're taking a deep dive into uh, one of the most volatile hotspots on the planet, yeah. Taiwan Strait. And uh, we've got a single source for this deep dive. Yeah. And it's a fascinating one. It really is. It's a, it's a detailed account of something that's being called uh, Plan A. And uh, it's a potential CCP strategy for taking control of Taiwan. Yeah. Now, we can't verify this information. Yeah. Um, but if it's even remotely accurate, you know, it paints a pretty unsettling picture. Absolutely. The, the potential implications of this are quite serious. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's let's get into it. OK, so uh, first of all, it's not what most people imagine. Right. It's not a full blown D-Day style invasion. Right. This source describes a much a much more subtle and, and, and frankly, unnerving approach. Um, it hinges on what they call non-war military actions. Yeah. So help us unpack that. What exactly does that mean? Well, it's it's essentially about achieving military objectives without actually resorting to, to a declared war. Think of it like a series of calculated moves. Um, each one is designed to kind of weaken Taiwan's defenses, position the CCP for a strategic advantage, Okay. all while kind of staying below the threshold of outright conflict. So instead of sending in tanks and troops, they're using other means to exert pressure and control. Precisely. And the source outlines a, a two-phase approach. Okay. Uh, phase one. This is all about infiltration and control. Okay. So establishing a foothold within Taiwan. Okay. Um, and they do this through through seemingly innocuous means. All right. So let's let's dig into that a little bit because that's uh that's a pretty fascinating and, and disturbing idea. Um they specifically mentioned uh, four key ports in Taiwan. Right. Kaohsiung, Keelung, Taichung, and Hualien. Right. So are we talking about sneaking people into Taiwan? Right. How would they even do that? Well, it, it wouldn't be soldiers in uniform. Right. It'd be individuals. They'd be disguised as everyday civilians. Okay. We're talking about people posing as, you know, traffic controllers, mm. uh, volunteers, workers, and essential services. Basically, anyone who can blend in. Right. And and gain access to crucial infrastructure. This sounds like something out of like a, a spy movie. But is there any reason to believe that they could actually pull this off? Well, there's historical precedent for this kind of tactic. OK. Uh, you you might remember the annexation of Crimea back in 2014. Yeah. Uh, Russia utilized a very similar approach. They deployed soldiers disguised as little green men right. to seize control of key infrastructure and essentially create a fait accompli before the international community could react. Hmm. So they're using a playbook that's worked for them before. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this plan, Plan A, suggests that they might be adapting that playbook for Taiwan. Right. OK. So phase one is all about stealthy infiltrating Taiwan. Correct. What about phase two? Phase two is where things get even more and more interesting. OK. Um, the source refers to it as the strategic blockade. Hmm. Now, this is where Chinese naval power comes into play. And and particularly their growing fleet of aircraft carriers. OK. Um, the plan, as it's described, it involves positioning these carriers near Taiwan's international ports. But wouldn't that be considered an act of aggression? I mean, you know, parking an aircraft carrier off of someone's coast is pretty hard to ignore. Yeah, but that that's the clever part. They would exploit international maritime law. OK. They would claim the right to peaceful passage. Uh, maybe the need for replenishment. Mm -hmm. It's a way to exert pressure, you know, disrupt Taiwan's trade right. without technically violating international norms, at least at least not in a way that would trigger an immediate military response. Right. From the U.S. or its allies. Right. So they're playing a very careful game here, mm -hmm. pushing the boundaries as far as they can without crossing the line. Right. It's like they're slowly tightening a noose around Taiwan's neck. Right. Without anyone really noticing. It, it really highlights the importance of understanding the CCPs, their long-term thinking, right. their strategic thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're not necessarily looking for a quick victory. Right. They're playing the long game. They're mm -hmm. gradually increasing the pressure on Taiwan. Right. And, and at the same time, they're trying to deter any, any outside intervention. And this source suggests that Plan A is basically a blueprint for how they might be able to achieve that goal. It's it's certainly a possibility. Yeah. And and even if this specific plan is is not entirely accurate, it, it raises some really important questions. Yeah. About the CCP's intentions. Right. And the risks that we're facing in, in the Taiwan Strait. Absolutely. All right. So we've we've kind of laid out the basic framework of this of this alleged plan A. Um, but let's zoom out for a second and, and talk about the bigger picture here. How does this 
this potential plan fit into the current global context. We've got the war in Ukraine raging on, tensions between the US and China are, are at an all time high. It, it feels like the world is on a knife's edge right now. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right to to point out the global context. The the situation in the Taiwan Strait is is inextricably linked to the the broader geopolitical landscape. And the war in Ukraine has has profound implications yeah. for the balance of power in the Asia Pacific. Absolutely. The, the CCP is watching this very closely, right. uh, learning from from Russia's from Russia's successes and failures, and they're they're likely adjusting their own strategies accordingly. So the war in Ukraine is almost like a a real time case study for the CCP, a way to kind of test the waters and see how the international community might react. Precisely. They're they're looking at how the U.S. and its allies have have responded to to Russia's aggression. The effectiveness of sanctions, mm -hmm. the the role of information warfare, all of these factors are being are being very carefully analyzed yeah. and factored into into their own calculations. Our source even suggests that North Korean troops might be joining the fight on Russia's side. Mm -hmm. What would that mean for the situation in Taiwan? Mm -hmm. Would it would it embolden the CCP to to act more aggressively? That's a that's a really important question. Yeah, um, North Korea's potential involvement involvement in in Ukraine would would signal a a solidifying of alliances Russia China North Korea right you know forming forming a block that that directly challenges the the US led world order right and that that could embolden the CCP you know knowing that they have they have powerful allies backing them up so the stakes are incredibly high here, yeah. and and the situation is incredibly complex. But yeah. but let's uh let's bring it back to to the listener for a moment. What do what do you think they should take away from all of this? Yeah. What are the key insights that that we we want them to to walk away with? I think the the most important takeaway is is the need for vigilance and and awareness. Yeah. Whether or not this this plan A is is accurate. Right. It highlights the the very real threat. Right. That the CCP poses to Taiwan's to Taiwan's freedom and security. Yeah. It's it's a wake up call yeah. for the the international community. A reminder that that we can't afford to be complacent in the face of of this growing aggression. And it's it's not just about military preparedness either, right? It's about understanding the CCP's mindset, mm -hmm. their long term strategic goals, right? And and the unconventional tactics that they might they might use to to achieve those goals. Absolutely. We we need to be prepared to respond on multiple fronts, diplomatically, economically, and and in the realm of information warfare. So it's multifaceted challenge. It is. That that requires a a multifaceted response. And and that brings us to another another important takeaway for the listener. Critical thinking. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with a single unverified source here. Mm -hmm. So it's crucial to to evaluate this information carefully. Right. To consider alternative interpretations mm -hmm. yeah. and to avoid jumping to conclusions. I, I couldn't agree more. We need to be to be discerning consumers of information, especially in a world where where propaganda and disinformation are rampant. And that means being willing to to challenge our own assumptions, to seek out diverse perspectives. Yeah. And to engage in in respectful dialogue even when we disagree. So in a sense, this this deep dive is as much about equipping the listener with with the tools to to think critically right as it is about providing them with with specific information about about the Taiwan Strait crisis exactly you know? we, we want to empower the listener to to become informed and and engaged citizens right. capable of navigating the the complexities of of this issue and and forming their own conclusions absolutely all right we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're going to continue our deep drive into this uh, fascinating and, and somewhat disturbing source material. And and this is where this is where the concept of gray zone warfare comes in. Okay, it's about it's about operating in that space, that space between peace and war, mm -hmm. using tactics that are that are provocative, but not overtly hostile. Gray zone warfare. I I got to admit that's a new one for me. <laughs> Yeah. Can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, it's it's a relatively new term. Okay. But but it describes a a type of conflict that we're seeing more and more of in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it it involves using a combination of of military and non-military means. Okay. Uh, things like like cyber attacks, mm -hmm. economic coercion, 
disinformation campaigns mm -hmm. to achieve strategic objectives okay. without without actually triggering a full scale war. So it's like a kind of shadow war right. where the lines between peace and conflict are are deliberately blurred. Exactly. And and the CCP, they they are masters at this type of warfare. Mm -hmm. um, they've been using it for years, you know, to to expand their influence in the South China Sea. Right. To to pressure Taiwan and to right. and to undermine the US led world order. So they're yeah. they're essentially exploiting the the gray areas of, of international law, mm -hmm. finding the loopholes and ambiguities that allow them to to act aggressively. Right. But without technically breaking the rules. Exactly. And and that makes it really difficult. It does. For for democracies to to respond effectively. Yeah. If you overreact you you risk escalating the situation right into a full blown conflict mm -hmm. but if you do nothing mm -hmm. you you embolden the aggressor and and you allow them to to just keep chipping away at your interests right it's a real dilemma it is and and it seems like this plan a mm -hmm. you know it's, it's if it's legitimate is is a textbook example of of how the ccp might might use this this gray zone approach right to, yeah. to gradually take control of Taiwan without ever firing a shot. It's it's certainly a possibility, and and it highlights the the need for a for a new way of thinking mm -hmm. about about security and defense. Right, we, we can't just focus on traditional military threats anymore. We wow. we need to be prepared to to counter these these hybrid these gray zone challenges as well. So so what can what can Taiwan and its allies do mm -hmm. to to counter this type of of strategy? Well, it's it's a, it's a complex challenge, right? But but there are a a number of steps that they can take, right? Um, first, they they need to enhance their deterrence capabilities. Okay, make it make it clear to the CCP that that any aggression against Taiwan will be met with a with a swift and resolute response. Mm -hmm. This includes you know strengthening Taiwan's own military defenses, as well as as deepening security cooperation with with like-minded countries okay particularly particularly the united states so it's about it's about sending a clear signal that any any attack on taiwan mm -hmm. will have serious consequences exactly but but deterrence alone that's that's not enough we we also need to focus on on building resilience okay. both in taiwan and and in the broader international community okay. this means strengthening democratic institutions mm. promoting civic education and, and countering disinformation campaigns. So it's about it's about making sure that that societies are strong enough mm -hmm. to, to to withstand the the CCP's attempts to kind of undermine them from within. Precisely, and it also means building building stronger economic ties between democratic countries. Okay, you know, reducing their dependence on on China mm -hmm. and creating creating alternative supply chains right. for for critical goods. So it's it's a multifaceted approach. It is. Involving military, economic and and societal dimensions. Exactly. So it's a whole of society effort. Right. And it and it requires a long-term commitment from from all stakeholders. Our source also also mentions the the importance of of information warfare. Right. In in the CCP strategy. Mm -hmm. They they claim that that the CCP is is very adept at using using propaganda and disinformation to sow discord within Taiwan and to and to influence international perceptions. That's that's absolutely true. The CCP has has invested heavily in its propaganda apparatus mm -hmm. and they've become very very sophisticated right. in their use of of information warfare techniques. So they're they're trying to control the narrative to shape how people how people view the situation in in Taiwan. Right. And to and to undermine support for for the island's democracy. Exactly. They want to they want to create the impression that that unification with the mainland is is inevitable. Right. And and desirable while while portraying Taiwan's government as as corrupt and incompetent. And they're and they're doing this by spreading disinformation mm -hmm. through social media, state controlled media outlets right. um, and, and other channels. Precisely. They're, they're using a, a variety of tactics. Including spreading fake news, mm -hmm. uh, amplifying amplifying divisive content, and harassing journalists and activists who who challenge their narrative. So it's it's a it's a full blown information war. It is, and it's and it's happening right now. Absolutely, and and it's having a, a real impact. Um, we've we've seen a rise in in pro China sentiment in in some parts of of Taiwan, mm -hmm. and and there's been a a growing sense of of 
fatigue and resignation among among some segments of the population. So what can be done to to counter this this propaganda onslaught? Mm. Well, it's a it's a difficult challenge, yeah. but there are a number of, of things that, that can be done. First, we need to improve our, our ability to to detect and, and expose disinformation campaigns. Okay. This means investing in fact-checking initiatives, mm. promoting media literacy, mm. and and developing tools to track the spread of of false information. So it's about it's about helping people to to distinguish between between fact and fiction, to yeah. be more more discerning consumers of, of information. Exactly. But we we also need to be proactive okay. in in promoting our own narrative, um, in highlighting the values and, and benefits of democracy. Right. And in and in countering the, the CCP's propaganda with, with credible information and, and compelling stories. So it's it's not just about debunking lies. It's about it's about offering a a positive alternative mm -hmm. vision for, for the future. Precisely. We we need to give people a reason to to believe in democracy to to feel hopeful about the future mm -hmm. and to and to resist the CCP's attempts to to undermine their their freedom and autonomy. Our source claims that the CCP has has developed a, a comprehensive playbook for for a for a non-war military takeover of of Taiwan and they they draw parallels to to historical examples like like the People's Liberation Army's entry into Shanghai in 1949. Hmm. That's a that's a very interesting point. Yeah. Um. The the CCP has a has a long history of of studying past conflicts right. and adapting those lessons to to their own strategic goals. Mm -hmm. And and the example of of Shanghai is is particularly relevant yeah. because it it highlights the CCP's ability to to combine military force with with propaganda and and psychological warfare mm -hmm. to to achieve a a swift and decisive victory. So so they're they're looking at history as a as a guide, mm -hmm. trying to to learn from the successes of, of their predecessors right and avoid their mistakes exactly and they're and they're very good at it they've they've spent decades mm. analyzing past conflicts mm. identifying patterns right and developing strategies mm. that have that have proven to be effective okay in achieving their objectives so it's so it's not just about brute force right it's about a sophisticated combination mm -hmm. of of military political and psychological tactics precisely and that's and that's what makes the ccp is such a such a formidable adversary right they're they're not just a, a military threat they're a they're a multi-dimensional threat that oh, yeah. that requires a, a multi-dimensional response our source claims that the ccp might be willing to sacrifice millions of lives mm -hmm. in order to to achieve unification with with Taiwan. Is there is there any evidence to to support this assertion? Well, it's it's certainly a, a disturbing thought. Yeah. And it's it's difficult to know for sure yeah. what what the CCP is is wow. willing to do. But but it's important to remember that that they they have a history of using of using brutal force to to suppress dissent and to and to maintain control. Right. Um, the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989 right. is, is a is a stark reminder of their willingness to use violence against their own people. And they've shown a, a similar ruthlessness mm -hmm. in their dealings with with Tibet and Xinjiang. So while we while we can't say for certain that, that they're willing to, to sacrifice millions of lives, we can't we can't rule it out either. Exactly. And that's and that's why deterrence is so important. We mm. we need to make it clear to the CCP that any any aggression against Taiwan mm. will will come at a at a, a very high cost right. both in terms of of human life and and in terms of their own their own strategic interests. Our source emphasizes the importance of of the CCP's control mm -hmm. over over key ports mm -hmm. as a as a crucial element of their strategy. Right. They they claim that that operatives disguised as civilians right. could could seize control of these ports. Yeah. Effectively cutting Taiwan off from the outside world. That's that's a scenario that that should concern anyone who who cares about about Taiwan's security and and autonomy. Yeah. Ports are are the lifeblood of any island nation. Right. They're essential for trade, for transportation, for for communication with the rest of the world. So if if the CCP were to gain control of these ports, mm -hmm. it it would be a, a devastating blow to to Taiwan's to Taiwan's economy That's or, and morale it it would isolate Taiwan right. make it make it much more difficult to to receive military or or humanitarian aid mm. and give the and give the CCP a, a stranglehold on its on its trade and commerce the the source paints a, a very bleak picture of of what 
what life might be like in Taiwan. Mm. If if the CCP were to successfully implement this this plan A, they they describe a scenario where the where the government is is effectively paralyzed. Mm. The the military is is neutralized and the people are are subjected to it to a regime of of surveillance and control. It's it's a chilling reminder of of what's at stake yeah. in this conflict. Taiwan is a is a vibrant democracy with with a free press, a a, a thriving economy, and a and a unique culture, mm -hmm. it it would be a, it would be a tragedy. Yeah. If all of that were to be lost. So it's it's not just a geopolitical struggle. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a battle for the for the very soul of of Taiwan. Exactly, and it's a and it's a battle that that deserves the the attention and support of the entire world. Right. The the outcome of of the struggle will have will have profound implications for the future of democracy mm. and the rules-based international order. The the source mm. also also highlights the the psychological impact mm. of of this of this constant pressure right. and and intimidation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, they suggest that, that that the CCP is is deliberately trying to wear down the, the Taiwanese people mm. to make them feel feel isolated and hopeless mm. and to and to, to create a sense of inevitability mm -hmm. about about unification with the mainland. That's a very that's a very astute observation. Yeah. The, the CCP understands the the importance of psychological warfare. Right. And they're and they're very adept mm -hmm. at using using propaganda, disinformation, and and other forms of psychological pressure to to achieve their objective. Mm -hmm. They they want to they want to break the will of the Taiwanese people. Okay. To to convince them that resistance is futile. Right. And that and that unification is the is the only option. So it's, so it's not just about you know military hardware or or economic sanctions. Right. It's about breaking the spirit mm -hmm. of of the Taiwanese people. Exactly, and that's and that's why it's it's so crucial for yeah. for Taiwan to build societal resilience, mm -hmm. to to foster a strong sense of of national unity. Right. And to and to counter the CCP's propaganda effectively. They they need to give people hope. Right. To, to remind them of what they're fighting for and to and to show them that they're not alone in in this struggle. Our source suggests that that the CCP might might be deliberately trying to provoke a, a reaction mm. from Taiwan, mm -hmm. hoping that any any aggressive response could be used as a as a pretext right. for a for a full scale invasion. That's that's a that's a classic trap yeah. that authoritarian regimes often set for for democracies. Mm -hmm. They they try to to bait their opponents into overreacting, knowing that any any escalation can can be used to to justify their own actions. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a dangerous game, and yeah. and Taiwan needs to be needs to be very careful not to fall into it. So it's about it's about walking. A, a very fine line, mm -hmm. you know, being being firm, right, in in defending their their interests, mm. but also avoiding any any actions that could that could give the CCP an excuse, right, to wow. to escalate the situation. Precisely, it's a it's a delicate balancing act, yep, and it and it requires a a deep understanding of the of the CCP's mindset and their their strategic objectives. This Plan A, yeah, you know, the, whether whether it's it's real or not. Mm really really shines a light on the on the complexity it says of the situation in the in the Taiwan Strait it's not just a, it's not just a military standoff right it's it's a multi-dimensional struggle it is that involves economics information warfare mm -hmm. even psychology you've you've hit the nail on the head yeah. and and it underscores the the need for a, for a comprehensive and coordinated response mm -hmm. from Taiwan and its allies we we can't afford to to think in silos anymore. Right. We, we need to we need to address this challenge from from all angles. And that means understanding the the CCP's long term strategy, mm -hmm. recognizing their their willingness to use to use unconventional tactics. Right. And being and being prepared to to counter their their efforts to to undermine Taiwan from within. Oh, absolutely. This is this is a battle for the for the future of Taiwan, right? But it's but it's also a battle for the for the future of democracy and the the rules based international order, right. and and we all have a, a stake in in the outcome. Yeah, it's it's clear that the that the CCP strategy goes goes far beyond just just military might. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're they're playing a long game here, and they're using every tool at their disposal to to try to shift the balance in their favor. And this source makes a a really interesting point about about the CCP's use of, of timing, mm -hmm. they suggest that, 
that the CCP might be deliberately planning their their actions to to coincide with with major events on the world stage. Right. You know, things things like the U.S. presidential election or the or the Olympics. Right. It's, it's almost like they're they're trying to to exploit moments of, of global distraction to kind of make their moves yeah. without drawing too much attention. Precisely. They know that they the world's attention span is limited. And they're they're betting that they can they can get away with more. Right. When when everyone is is focused on on something else. It's a it's a pretty cynical calculation. It is. But it but it seems to be seems to be working for them. Unfortunately, yes. Yep. We've we've seen this pattern before. Mm-hmm. The the CCP often often takes advantage of moments of of global instability or distraction to to advance their own interests. So it's so it's not just about military power or yeah. economic influence. Wow. It's it's about understanding the CCP's, <laughs> their strategic cunning mm-hmm. and and their and their willingness to exploit, you know, any opportunity right. that presents itself. Absolutely. And that's and that's why it's so crucial for for democracies to to be vigilant, right. like to coordinate their responses, right. and to and to present a, a united front right. against against this type of of aggression. We've covered a lot of ground today, yeah. and and it's been a it's been a pretty sobering conversation. It's it's certainly not easy to to grapple with with these kinds of threats, but but I think it's it's essential that we that we do so. I agree. So let's let's wrap things up by by bringing it back to to the listener. Yeah. What are the what are the key takeaways from this? From this deep dive, yeah. what do we what do we want them to to remember, to to think about, to to maybe even act on? I think the the most important takeaway is is that the the situation in in the Taiwan Strait is is incredibly complex and volatile. Right. There are there are no easy answers. Right. And this and the stakes are incredibly high. We're talking about the the potential for conflict. Yeah. Between between two nuclear armed superpowers. Yeah. The the future of of democracy in in Asia. Mm-hmm. And the um the very stability of of the the global order exactly so so it's it's crucial that we that we approach this issue with with a with a clear head with a with a critical eye and a, and a willingness to to engage in in thoughtful dialogue we can't afford to be swayed by by propaganda yeah. or to fall into to fall into the trap of of simplistic thinking absolutely not we we need to we need to understand the the nuances right of the situation right to to consider different perspectives yeah. and to be prepared for for a range of possible outcomes another another key takeaway is the is the importance of of vigilance mm-hmm. the ccp is playing a long game they are and they're and they're constantly looking for for opportunities to to advance their their interests, right? So we, we need to be we need to be aware of of their tactics, their strategies, and their ultimate goals. Absolutely. We also we also need to be to be prepared to to respond to to their provocations in a in a measured and effective way. Mm-hmm. Deterrence is is crucial, yeah. but it but it has to be backed up by by a by a clear understanding of the risks and and a willingness to take action. Right. When when necessary, absolutely. And and finally, I think it's important to remember that that we're we're not powerless in in the face of this yeah. this challenge. Democracies have have faced down tyranny before. They have, and and we can can and we can do it again. But but it takes it takes courage. It does. It takes it takes resolve, mm-hmm. and it takes a it takes a collective commitment to the to the values that we that we hold dear. Right. We need to we need to stand up for for freedom for democracy. And and for the right of of all people to determine their own destiny. Absolutely. And we need to we need to do it together. We do. With a with a clear sense of purpose yeah. and and a, and a shared determination to prevail. This has been a, a heavy deep dive, but an incredibly important one. Thank you for joining us on on this journey, and and we hope you'll continue to explore these these complex issues with us in the future.